Well, hello, my Roar ATR friends. Uh, Trey Rackliff here, just sitting here in my hotel room in Tokyo. I just took a photo yesterday, and I'm just now processing it, and I thought I would show you a not oft used feature in, in Aurora HDR, okay. Um, all right, so here's the shot, okay. I took this out of, out of the window here. Um, this is, by the way, just a single raw photo, okay. That's how I do most of my HDRs now. And just by bringing it in and checking on tone mapping, um, there's always been a little bit of adjustment, not much, not much, uh, but we're really gonna amp it up here together. Um, the first two things I always do, you know, if you see my other videos, you see I do these two things all the time. That's not what I'm getting at here, but I'll, I'll show you my, my favorite secret features in a minute. Is I always crank up the HDR enhance a little bit and I get that smart tone up. Look at that. See that? These are like the two most important sliders, really. Okay. I'll show you kind of a niche one, but uh, those are the two most important sliders. Okay. By the way, artistically here, if you want to hear what I was trying to do artistically, is, you know, it's really easy to take a photo of the whole building, but more and more now I zoom in and just try to find weird, interesting patterns because I think it's uh, kind of confusing and nice and maybe even a bit Gursky esque. Uh, I don't know. You read the check. So um, now let's uh, let's go to this uh, feature that I, I want to show you. Okay, we're going to scroll down here uh, to this area called HDR Details Boost. Okay, I don't know why that was hidden. So um, the only way to really get an idea of what, how this works is you've got to zoom into like a hundred or two hundred percent. Okay. Um, there's really three areas where you can adjust the HDRness of the photo, okay? The first was right up here with HDR Enhance, okay? You can see how that uh, changes it, okay? Uh, like that. Uh, the other area is down here under HDR Structure, okay? You can do quite a bit here. Uh, and the last area is called uh, HDR Details Boost, okay? So you can kind of think of these as like three layers of HDR. This would be like the top layer. This kind of does it in big chunky parts all over the place, like an impressionist painting from really far away. Um, this one is a little bit more detailed. All right, this gets down into the uh, the nummy new news, some of the little details in there. But the super details are down here in HDR details boost. Okay, so let's zoom into uh, 100% here and uh, see what's happening. Uh, by the way, I took this with a Sony A7R Mark III and the 24 to 105 length. Great combination. Look, I can even see these people having a, a meeting there. Uh, let's go, let's go all the way into 200% here. Okay, so now that we're in, let me kind of show you what, what's happening here. So um, earlier I was saying HDR structure. You can see that as I increase this, it's kind of like clarity in a way, right? It makes the blacks a little chunkier and the white's a little brighter, okay? It's doing kind of a little bit of semi-localized tone map, okay? And that can be a good look, all right? And you can increase the softness or the make it harder or you know sharper, I guess is the way to say it. Or you can boost it up. Okay, and so you kind of see, now that I've done this, is it's kind of sucked a little of the color out of it, right? And you can't really say it's helped a lot of the details. Now, when you look at it on a macro level, it, it might look better or worse, but we're just going to look at the details here. So let me drop these back to normal. Okay. And we're going to go down here into HDR details boost. So um, uh, let me go ahead and increase the small amount here. Okay. You can see that uh, the little details, like on his hair and stuff, got enhanced. Uh, medium. We can do a little bit of that. I usually don't play with a large too much because those are the bigger, chunkier parts. Okay. So what's happening down here with protection and masking? Well, remember, if you don't know what these do, um, it's always a good idea to come and swing them all the way to 100%. Okay. Uh, in this case, protection is not doing too much, but masking is pretty important because I don't know if you can see this, but now that I've increased these a bit, um, there is like noise. Okay. Can you see this? There's like really no noise before. This is taking ISO 200. When you turn it on, you can kind of see like some graininess in here. That's because it's doing such detailed uh, HDR boosting that it's like finding minute parts of noise and making those more HDR-ish, which is what we don't want. So that's why you got to increase the masking. So watch this. As I pull up the masking, 
um, all that noise kind of goes away without ruining any of the detail other other places, right? If I were to use uh, the HDR denoise and increase this, it really kind of makes everything a little foggy looking, right? Which we don't want, okay? So anyway, get into 200%, use your HDR details boost here, um, and make sure you get that masking up high enough so that you don't, um, you don't uh, get any of that nasty noise. All right, let's look at a little, a little before and after here. Got my little slider. Okay, look at that. Much more enhanced. Uh, we can go even crazier with it if we wanted to. Um, I'll do my one finishing move, which I always do. If you've seen these videos before, you know I do it all the time. I'm a sucker for it. Image radiance. I love it. Get that up a little bit. Maybe not that much. Pull up the shadows. Oh, uh, yeah. A little bit of vividness. Look at that. I love it. Okay, so that's before and after. Before and after. All right, I hope you found that little tip useful. Remember to dive in and try some of these different tools. There's a lot of power in here. Uh, don't get stuck in a rut of just using the same tools over and over again. All right, you guys. Love you and see you next time. Bye.